here's the first razor stand off the machine and all in all is pretty good for the first shot obviously I've only run op 1 um, up to you know I got deck off the backside put a couple features in the backside but I want to dial in op 1 before I before I head to op 2 um, so I figured this is a I made some some mistakes uh, as far as you know achieving good surface finish goes so I figured uh, this would be a, a good chance to to share a couple little tips and tricks um, the first thing you can see my right here and that's my lead in and lead out for finishing these these uh, pocket walls um, you're almost always going to have some sort of little witness mark it's kind of where the cutter just tends to grab a little bit um, as it's leading in and out of the cut um, so what I like to do is if there's any area on the part that lends itself to hiding that um, I try to put my lead in and lead out there um, so the other thing I'm going to try to do, I don't typically like doing it in stainless, but I'm going to try running an air pass on this because um, I think the cutter's deflecting a little bit. It's a pretty long depth of cut with an eighth inch cutter. So I'm going to add an air pass, which should uh, help this little, you know, essentially a gouge. Um, and then what I'm also going to do is because this part, you know, as you're looking at it aesthetically, you're going to be looking at it this way. Instead of putting that lead in, lead out on this back wall, I'm going to move it. To this front wall maybe tuck it in a corner somewhere um, that way it's not nearly as noticeable as it's you know sitting on your bathroom stand um, so I am gonna do that with the lead in lead out I'm gonna add an air pass um, and then so another thing I like to do um, when it comes to finishing is I, I don't like finishing the floor and the walls at the same time um, that's asking the cutter to do a lot and a lot of times you end up with either chatter on the floor chatter on the walls or both so what I'll do is I'll go in and I did it on this part I'll finish the floor and I'll leave about the exact same amount on the walls that the rougher did um, so I think I was maybe leaving three thou with the rougher here well I'll take a look at fusion and see what I ended up leaving but so when I go in and finish the floor I'll only finish the floor and leave at least three or three and a couple tenths on the wall so that way the side of the cutter isn't engaged at all as it's finishing the floor um, the other thing I'll do is then when I go to finish the walls I won't drag it across the floor that I've already finished I'll actually pick that up maybe a couple tenths um, I know it doesn't sound like much but that keeps just keeps the bottom of the cutter from being engaged while you're trying to achieve a good surface finish on the walls um, so we'll jump into fusion and we'll look at that first there's a couple other things I'd like to look at on here but uh, let's get into Fusion. Okay, we're over here in Fusion. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the uh, finishing of these pockets that hold the extra base plates. Um, so if you look here, this is the toolpath to finish the floor. And like I said, if I did this correctly, and I believe I did, when we come in here and we go to our stock to leave, yeah, so I'm leaving three and a half thou because I believe I'm leaving three thou with my rougher so that ensures that when I'm finishing the floor I'm not also engaged on the side so that toolpath looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and give that the okay <clears throat> the next toolpath we want to look at is when we're finishing the walls so if you remember you could see that lead in lead out line right there on the part so we're going to take care of that, and then we're going to add an air pass to try to clean those walls up. Um, so the first thing we want to do is come in here, and we want to check repeat finishing pass. So all that's going to do is add an air pass, um, which I typically don't like doing in 300 series stainless as it tends to work harden. Um, but I think we'll be okay here because this is a, a, pretty, a pretty long tool, um, so we're probably getting some deflection and also some chatter. <clears throat> so... Also, if you notice, these corners are pretty tight, so I'm using feed optimization here, um, and I'm slowing it down actually to one inch a minute in the corners, um, just to keep from gouging and keep the tool from digging in. So we want to slow that tool in the corners as, it's, as it works its way around the corner, and then it'll accelerate on the, on the straighter areas here. So to fix that lead in, lead out, <clears throat> I actually had it go into two pre-drill positions. I want to get rid of that. 
and I want to pick entry positions. And like I said, I want to kind of tuck it away where it's not quite in view. So I'm going to put it on this front wall here and this front wall here. And what that'll do is as you're looking at the stand this way, you know, if the tool's leading in on these walls, um, if there is any witness mark, um, it won't be nearly as obvious because, you know, you'd have to turn the stand around and look down into that corner just to see it. So this kind of tucks it out of the way. Um, I don't know if it's cheating or not, but it's just a, a way to keep it out of plain sight. So we'll go ahead, hit the OK. Now you can see the toolpath leads in and leads out in, in that upper right hand corner. And you can see these yellow marks signify where my tool is actually slowing down in the corners. The other thing I want to look at real quick here is my finish height. So my finish height is the bottom of my selected contour. If you remember, I actually want to try to pick that up even a couple tenths just to keep it off the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up three tenths. So what that will do is that will actually keep it up three tenths off the floor of those pockets. Um, it won't be noticeable to the naked eye. But you can see, you zoom way in, there's the there's my floor, and there's where that tool is actually going to finish those pocket or the walls of that pocket. Um, that just keeps it up off the floor. It keeps the cutter from being engaged on both the floor and the side walls at the same time. I know we've already finished the floor, um, but it would still tend to drag across there and and could affect surface finish. So now let's take a look at uh, another thing that we can fix. So the next thing I want to look at is the finish that I got on the profile. Now I'm using a half inch seven flute destiny tool and it leaves a pretty nice finish but you can see if you look very closely in here there's a little bit of chatter um, there's a little bit of chatter in here um, and I think that is a hundred percent due to a fairly obvious mistake I made um, and then also you can see this is actually my lead outline um, and we'll take care of that too so the obvious mistake I made is if you look at the floor of essentially the little umbrella that's left here you can see that's a pretty nice finish that's not an adaptive toolpath finish on the floor so what I actually did was I programmed my finisher just slightly lower than my rougher and that's a pretty big uh, faux pas on my part if you will um, so you always want to especially on an outer profile where you know it al almost doesn't matter you want to rough a little bit below uh, your part and then pick your finisher up um, still finish slightly below the the bottom of the part but above where the rougher cut now I am a little bit tight on room here because my rougher actually has a 60 thou corner radius on it um, and I'm holding these in my fifth axis vise that only holds on to an eighth inch of stock um, and my part is you know it fits in the work envelope obviously but um, I'm a little bit tight just because of my corner radius so I got a 60 thou corner rad on there and I'm trying to rough as low as I can with my rougher without hitting I think I'm staying 20 thou above my jaws um, so what I need to do is I need to just pick my finisher up a little bit. Uh, my finisher actually has a 30 thou corner rad. But the other thing is this part on the other side gets a, almost a matching chamfer uh, a little bit smaller than this. So if I happen to leave a little bit of a cusp from the corner radius, it's not the end of the world um, as long as I'm cleaning up the, the vertical wall, which I, which I will be doing. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into Fusion and take a look at that and uh, clean up those mistakes. And then after that, I got, I think, one more thing to fix, and we'll go run another part. Okay, back here in Fusion. Before we take a look at finishing that outer profile, I just want to show you one thing real quick. Um, you'll notice I have two roughing step-downs here using the same tool. So my first rough steps down uh, about halfway down the part here, uh, and then I come and I rough the rest of the way down. The reason I'm doing that is because my tool here only has 5 eighths length to cut, uh, 625. And this is a tool that I use on other components of my razor. Uh, I didn't really want to take it out of the machine. Uh, it's a good tool. It's already in my library. So 
in order to get around the fact that I don't have enough length of cut, on this first roughing step down, I'm telling it to leave 7 thou on the walls. Um, so radial stock to leave is set to 7 thou. Then on this full depth uh, roughing pass, I'm leaving 10 thou uh, radially uh, on the walls. So what that does is that leaves me 3 thou clearance on the shank of my tool when it's roughing to depth here. Otherwise, if I, if I roughed all the way, you know, two step downs, leaving the same amount on the walls, in theory, that shank would rub as it's roughing down at this final depth. Um, so once we get on the machine, I'll stop it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. But um, that's just a, a quick workaround if, if you're stuck with a tool that, you know, doesn't have enough length to cut. You know, you leave, you leave a little bit less on the walls when you first step down. Um, and then you leave a little bit more on your on your second and that gives you the clearance you need on the shank. So now what we'll look at is where I am actually finishing below my roughing tool pass uh, on accident here. So if I turn on where is finished profile here it is. Sorry lost for a second. Okay, so if I turn on finish profile, you can see here's my roughing pass, here's my finish pass. So that's a it's a mistake on my part, um, especially on the outer profile, you should never finish below where you're roughing. There's no need to finish the floor out here. Um, so we'll get in there and we'll fix that. Let me turn that off. Finish profile. <clears throat> and First thing we want to do is you can see my height is set from the, my bottom reference point here, which is bottom of the part, 15 thou. Let's change that to minus 12 thou. That should pick that tool up above the rougher. Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at my lead in and lead out. If you remember, I had a, a witness mark in this area here as far as where I was leading in and leading off the part. So one way to do that is I want to get rid of this radius. I want a zero degree angle here. And I want a linear lead in distance of maybe an inch. Um, and what that's going to do is the tool is going to come down and it's going to feed straight onto the part. The other thing I want to do is I want to have a lead out exit, but I don't want it to be the same as my lead in. I want it to be zero here on the radius. I want no angle, but my distance, uh, let's change to maybe one and a half. So that way, what that's going to do is once it gets back to this point, it's going to continue feeding off the part here. Um, it'll take a little extra time and it's technically a run an air pass on this side, but that's not a big deal. That'll get rid of our, our witness mark here. Um, and so that should take care of that. Um, the other thing I want to do is, since that rougher has a 60 thou corner rad, um, and my finisher has a 30 thou, my rougher is leaving a pretty big, you know, fillet down here for this finisher to take all in one pass. So what I want to do is I want to run two step overs with this finish pass. Um, the first one is mainly going to be to remove all of that fillet rad that's in the bottom. And then the, the next pass um, will take it to finish. So I'm going to have two finishing passes. I'm going to change this to 3 thou. So essentially that will leave 3 thou on the walls um, for my, my final pass. Um, so I think that's all I need to take care of. Let's hit OK. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. So you can see it's going to plunge down. And then it's going to feed across onto the part, uh, run its two passes, and then it's going to feed off the part. Um, so there should no, be no more lead in, lead out witness mark here. Um, other than that, that looks pretty good. Um, so let's go take a look at one more thing that we can fix, um, and then we'll throw one on the machine. Okay, the last thing I want to look at here, um, again, dealing with surface finishes down inside this uh, large bore which is where my acetal insert is going to go that holds the handle so you can see it's hard to see there you go the finish on the floor is a little iffy 
Um, and if you rotate around here, I think there's a little bit, yeah, up front, there's a little bit of a weird spot uh, on the walls. So, going back to what I said before, and honestly, we're going to double check and make sure I did it, um, is you don't want to finish the walls at the same time as the floor. Um, and I think, so that rougher is going down in there with that 60 thou corner radius. I think it's just too much material in the corners to take all in one shot with the, with the finisher. Um, so we're going to take a look at that infusion and see uh, if I followed my own advice or if we need to go and uh, make some changes. But yeah, I want to get rid of some of that, some of that chatter. Now, there's going to be an acetone insert that gets pushed down in here with an O-ring. So, you know, you're typically not going to see anything in here, but, you know, it's, it's still best practice to even something that will never be seen, you know, try to get the best surface finish as you can. Um, it also you know, avoids any excess hand working. The other thing you'll see here is my fillet rad. While you can barely feel it, there's just a slight step right there. And I think to take care of that, I just need to pick up the uh, the little ball nose that, that finishes this fillet. So I'll probably add a, a few tenths, a height offset in here. And that should blend a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look at this this large bore here. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Dimensionally, this part was, was very good. Um, probably within a thou of, of everything, maybe a thou and a half too, but um, with, that's with no comp in the tools. So I was pretty happy there. Um, but let's take a look at this, this bore infusion, and then uh, we'll go run something. Okay, we're back in fusion here one last time. This time we're going to look at the finishing of this bore. Uh, I use the same tool to finish the bore that I do on um, the outside profile. Um, so the first thing, let's look at finishing the floor. If you remember, I'm um, looking at the part, I had a little bit of an iffy finish at the bottom. It wasn't bad, but it had some swirl marks. And I think that's because I was engaged with both the side of the cutter and the bottom of the cutter. Um, so what I'm going to look at in here is my radial stock to leave. I'm leaving three thou currently and I believe with my rougher, I'm leaving 7 thou. Um, so I want to change this to 7.5. That should keep this tool a half thou, half thou off the walls um, as it's finishing the floor. Um, that way it, it's, it's only finishing the floor, it's not engaged on the side at all. So that's all I want to do here, um, what that generates. So you'll see it plunge down in the middle, finish the floor, staying 7.5 thou away from the finished walls. Next, I'll come into the finished walls toolpath. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to pick this tool up so it's not finishing the floor at all. Now, I'm not going to pick it up much, um, similar to what we did um, when we were finishing these, these pockets up front. I want nothing radial, axial. I want to leave three tenths. Um, so what that's going to do is that's going to pick that tool up three tenths. Um, we won't be touching the floor at all, um, so it's only engaged on the side. The other thing I want to do is I want to add an air pass um, just to make sure we clean everything up and get the best finish we can. So we'll add the air pass, and then the last thing I want to do, um, similar to what we've done uh, on these other tool paths, is I want to move my lead in, lead out position so it's not as obvious. You know, you're looking at the stand. Um, from the front, before we had a lead-in, my lead-in lead-out was here on this back wall. I want to move it and put it on this front wall. So I'm going to hit entry position. And I'm just going to pick place up front here where it's not as um, not as out in the open, not as easy to uh, pick up on. And I'll hit OK. And there you go. So it's going to plunge down in the middle. I can see it's going to run two passes and it's going to lead in, lead out, up in the front here. So that is pretty much it for um, adjustments I want to make. Uh, so what we'll do now is I'll, I'll save this, post it out, and we'll go run another part and see, uh, see how it looks.
All right, so we're pretty much done with all the roughing now. I just want to take a quick break here and show what I was talking about. If you can see it, let's see if I can get it in focus. Yeah, okay, so that line right there, that's the difference. Uh, remember, I'm leaving 10 thou down here, 7 thou up here, so the shank of my tool doesn't rub. Um, so that's what that line is there. So uh, we're done roughing. Actually, the faces are finished with the shell mill. Um, so we'll carry on here and see what our finishing passes end up looking like. Okay, let's take a look at how we did here um, with the changes we made. Let's start with the pockets. Um, much, much better, both floor and sidewalls. As you can see, our lead-in, lead-out line is gone because we moved it to the front, although I can't really see anything. Maybe a little witness mark up in that corner, but it's, it's really hard to tell. So I think adding the air pass there helped um, as well. So yeah, the walls there on the eighth-inch finish look very good. <clears throat> down into the big counter bore here uh, the floor finish got slightly better um, it actually looks pretty good a little a couple little swirls in there but but not too bad um, the wall finish got substantially better uh, so I think what we did there was was definitely helped we uh, there's no chatter on the walls and it cut right to size so so our changes there um, helped and now to the outer profile. As you can see, our lead-in, lead-out line is gone. Um, so that's no longer there. Our finishes look much better. Adding the air pass definitely helped. However, if you look over on yeah, this side here, so you can see, if I angle it right, that line right there, that's where our finisher actually leads in and finishes the profile of the part. Um, so our finisher, even though we, we fixed our toolpath, was still cutting this, this bottom umbrella here. Um, so I did a little bit of digging into it. Turns out my rougher was actually cutting uh, a couple thou too shallow. Um, not in the program, but actually in the, the height offset itself. I, I retouched it off and I had a couple thou change. Um, so it was not cutting deep enough and leaving too much material for the finisher on the floor. So I'm going to fix that for the next one. Um, so that should alleviate that problem. But if you look, I mean the finishes look look much better. So just adding the air pass obviously helps. Now if we get it up off the floor, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. I picked that ball nose up um, that finishes this fillet in the outer chamfer. I picked it up about a half thou. I picked it up a half thou. Um, and there is almost no step there. I'm going to go a couple more tenths on the next one, but I'm pretty happy with where that ended up. Um, so yeah, all in all, the changes we made uh, helped drastically. Uh, get that rougher taken care of. And uh, I'll run another part here. So thanks for watching here, and um, hopefully I was able to help, help you out with a couple quick tips and tricks on um, you know programming for for the best surface finish as possible um, and these are just easy things that you know you're not even getting into feeds and speeds just good practice um, to, to achieve a, a good finish uh, so you can look for these razor stands on our website probably here I would say within the next week or so um, I gotta program and run the acetal insert on the new lathe which I'm looking forward to doing that um, other than that it's about all that's keeping these from hitting the website. And um, look for future videos from us. Uh, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment below um, if you like the video. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. So a quick recap to go over what we covered today um, in regards to achieving better surface finishes. You want to finish above your roughing height on outer profile. So pick your finisher up so you're not dragging it across the umbrella that your rougher has made on the bottom. Um, you want to finish walls and floors separately. Um, so on pockets, um, I typically finish the floors first, 
and then come back and finish the walls um, just to avoid you know anytime you, you just want to avoid finishing with both the bottom of the tool and the side of the tool at the same time you want to pick your wall finishers up a few tenths to avoid dragging so that what that means is you know you finished the floor already um, now when you come back to finish the walls pick that tool up a couple tenths uh, something that's not noticeable but it will keep that tool from you know recutting or, or dragging across the floor that you just finished and will ultimately improve your surface finish on the walls and then one of the easier ones to do is move your lead-ins and lead-outs to to hidden areas on the part or if you have an area on the part that you know is later going to be cut away um, put your lead-in and lead-out there uh, a lot of times I'll do that I'll have a notch or something on the outer profile of the part that you know eventually gets cut away um, when I'm finishing the profile of the part, I'll put my lead in and lead out there, um, and then in the long run, it's, it's gone. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube chan channel. Um, follow along on Instagram, um, and comment below if you like the video, and let us know if there's anything you want to see in the future. Uh, these razor stands should be hitting the website here in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that, and we'll keep trying to put out videos here in the near future. So thanks guys and uh, have a good one.